Why hey, is that? Hang on. Please, let me educate your guest a little bit about okay. his own country. Uh, oh, so please educate all, me. Please educate calling... me. I, I'm about to. Be quiet and I will. You're not a terrorist. When it gets Why dark do you and darker, always, people you're like a you terrorist. always bring race into it. It's got nothing to do with race people like and me. everything to do with people who kill people. Yes, people yet, like you, race baiters like you. I have not like heard you. you. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to watch Constantine Kissin take on a shameless race baiter on the issue of how to tackle terrorist groups in the United Kingdom. Now, there is a lot to get through with this one, and Constantine does a great job. So let's get straight into it. We had literally people saying the Jews will not replace us, and Donald Trump. Trump said they're very fine people. We literally have people, like I said, going against this capital right here, committing a violent insurrection. But for some strange reason, when the number one domestic terror threat in America and also increasingly in Europe and the UK is white terrorists, white nationalist terrorists, white extremists, I never hear anyone say, you know what, we should ban them. We should deport them. Oh, what, what I instead hear is they have economic anxiety. The double standard here at play has to be exposed, right? And I want people to really think about what they're really advocating. If someone doesn't like your speech, you know what? You're not just going to be uh, not tolerated. You're going to be deported, especially if you're a person of color. How does that make a multiracial society that is both the UK and America safer and better, especially, and I'm speaking now as an American, and you know in the UK, the rising domestic terror threat is not Islamic extremism, which, by the way, exists. It is white nationalist extremism. Not a single word about that, but I hear all these free speech advocates. All these people are all about Western civilization. All, all of a sudden, turn to censorship and all of a sudden become authoritarian when it comes to Muslims and people of well, color. Well, hang on. Why I, is that? Hang on. Please, let me educate well, your guest a little bit about okay. his own country. Uh, oh, so please educate all, me. Nobody's please educate calling, me. I, I'm about to. Be quiet and I will. Now... First of all, nobody's calling for people to be deported because of their views. We have laws in this country against uh, organizations that are prescribed as terrorists, and I have no problem with terrorists being removed from this country under the laws of this country. Secondly, Donald Trump never said that the people calling uh, for the eradication of Jews will find people. If you go and look at his quotes, he actually condemned them mm. and the said they should be condemned absolutely. But the people who were there protesting about the statues, they were the ones that were fine people. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats. You got a, you had a lot of bad you had a lot of bad people in the other group too. Unfairly, sir. I'm sorry. I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly. No, I just didn't understand what you were saying. No. There were people in that rally, and I looked the night before. If you look. They were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day it looked like they had some rough, bad people, neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this. There are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country, a horrible moment. Now, you should educate yourself about those things. And thirdly, you should educate about the fact that, regrettably, I would quite like to have a First Amendment here in the UK. We do not have a First Amendment, and I would have a lot more sympathy with your argument if we hadn't spent the last 10 years watching people be sacked from their jobs for saying women are women and men are men. Okay, so credit to Trigonometry for editing this video and putting that clip in there. Make sure you guys check them out. And also, if you haven't seen, I did an interview with Constantine that might interest you as well. So I'll leave that for you guys in the recommended, and you can check that out next. But to the point that they just made, anybody making that claim that Trump said that neo-Nazis are good people is either woefully uneducated 
and incompetent because if you make that claim, then you should absolutely be able to back it up. Or they are just bad faith people who you should never listen to. A mere cursory glance at that clip shows us just how easily that is debunked. So the fact that he even went there after all these years shows how untrustworthy this individual is. And Constantine came in with the smoke saying how he's going to educate him, which is the perfect thing to say to a narcissist because the ego has been poked and our boy is not happy about it. And he's not going to get any less disgruntled here because Constantine is about to follow through with his promise to educate this man. Yes, let me educate what? your guest a little bit about okay. his own country. Nice. So pay close attention to what is being said in this following tug of war between the two men and how this conversation is being framed and I'll check in after. But first guys, if you do like this video and if you're getting value from it, chuck a like and if I've earned your subscribe, you can smash that big juicy red button below. Let's get into it. Yeah, and I would also add that when you say that I'm not respecting free speech, Vajat, when I say I don't respect people who won't condemn Hamas, they're in- I didn't say you. No, no, but they can say it. They can say it. I just don't have to respect it. It's a bit like when I block people on Twitter. Of course, people, you don't have I, to respect it. No, but when I, when I block people on, on X, for example, or formerly Twitter, and people say, well, you're suppressing their free speech. No, I'm not. They can still tweet what the hell they like. I just don't have to read it. I don't have to hear it. You know, that, this, that actually is what free speech is. And the First Amendment, which is one of the most powerful protectors of free speech in the world, it doesn't cover many things from child pornography to defamation to all sorts of stuff is, is not protected by the First Amendment. And nobody, I don't think, who looks at this sensibly would say that a terror group that espouses not just hatred but violent hatred and the mass killing of people, that is never protected by free speech, is it? And should it be? Uh, it, sh it shouldn't be, but listen, this is interesting. Uh, speaking about education, allow me to retort and educate. And I'll give you an example about the double standards, and I want you guys to really respond to this. Speaking about terrorism and violence, on the platform you mentioned, X, also known as Twitter, one of the wealthiest men, Elon Musk, has repeatedly promoted the replacement theory, an anti-Semitic uh, anti anti -Semitic conspiracy that blames Jews for trying to weaken and replace Western civilization with Muslims and immigrants and LGBTQ communities, right? That conspiracy theory has radicalized individuals to commit violence against Jews, against Muslims, against black people, against Latinos. That conspiracy has been retweeted and platformed and mainstreamed by the Republican Party, people like Elise Stefanik and Donald Trump, who, by the way, dined with Nick Fuentes, yeah, the did. leading white nationalist leader in America. You guys are fine with that. But I'm not when fine it comes with it. to any I other group whoa, that whoa, says whoa, whoa, Who said we're fine Wait with that? Wait a minute. Whoa, I wrote a whole, whoa, whole, I wrote a whole column. column. Oh, you're, okay. I wrote a <laughs> whole column know. condemning it. What are you talking about? Good. But you're not going to deport them, right? Are you going to deport them? Are you going to are you going to call them out for uh, uh, citizen, literally being linked to a terrorist conspiracy? I said repeatedly, people who are citizens who are not citizens of the country should be deported if they're members of a terrorist group. Why don't you understand the distinction should national between security, being a member of a terrorist should the group government and, and saying something should wrong? Should U.S. and U.K. should U.S. and U.K. government and national security go after these groups and these elected officials and these organizations? that have literally repeated and mainstreamed a conspiracy that has motivated terrorists to commit terrorism. Anyone who is a member of a terrorist group should be prosecuted under the law of the country in which they are a terrorist group. That's not what I asked. That's group. not what I asked. Well, the, but that's what that's I said. What I so you were challenging me about something and I I'm didn't very, say. And I'm very well, curious. People I'm very are allowed curious to have why you are not opinions, concerned about this. But in this instance, I didn't say I wasn't concerned about it. I said you can't deport citizens of the country in which they live, A. And B, I keep pointing out to you that the person we're talking about in this case, this NHS GP, he is a member of a terrorist group. We're not talking about him having the wrong opinions. People are allowed to have the wrong opinions, both in this country and in your country. It's something that we all celebrate as part of the heritage of Western civilization, and we would all, I hope, defend. The issue here is we have laws in this country about being a member of a terrorist group and people who are members of a terrorist group, I hope you would agree with me, should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And if they are prosecuted to the extent of the law and they are foreign citizens, should be deported. Will we agree on that? Okay, so a lot to say on that one exchange. And the next part that's about to happen is my favorite part, but it's first important to acknowledge how we got here and why what's about to happen happens. You see, this man has just made an asinine point. He says, oh, you want people who are a part of foreign terrorist groups to be deported, do you? Okay, 
Well, then why don't we deport all of the white nationalists? Where do you want them to be deported to, bro? Should we choose some little island? Should we maybe send them to the Nazi colonies in Argentina that actually exist? Nice one. And then he tries to reframe the conversation by saying, should national security go after anybody who is engaged in these sort of various different terrorist activities, specifically pointing out the neo-Nazi activities that are against Jewish people. As if to have some mic drop moment where Constantine's mask finally comes off and his true affinity for these types of people is revealed. Once again, our boy must have fallen short on his research because Constantine is Jewish. So, nice one. Anyways, Konstantin was logically and morally consistent in saying that anybody who's part of a terrorist group should be investigated or even prosecuted. And for me, that's a little bit more nuanced because I think it really depends on who the government is and what they consider terrorists. We've even seen people in America get called terrorists who are just protesting school boards. So it can be a slippery slope there. But if you're from a foreign country and you're actually conspiring to engage in terrorism, then yeah, see you later. So Constantine's response there makes sense, but for me, the best response would have been to once again, reframe the conversation. To illuminate the fact that time and time again in recent years, the UK police have been filmed and documented targeting Christians on the streets and arresting them for their beliefs. Check it out. Uh, religion you're allowed to do anywhere. No, miss, you're not allowed you are, to sing ch uh, you are, songs, church you are. songs outside of church grounds, by the way. You you're not allowed to sing church songs outside, outside of church grounds. Outside of church, or church uh, songs or uh, church you're not allowed grounds. To, that's fine, that's you're not fine. Allowed, she just said you're not allowed to sing church songs outside of church. Our church of, outside of church grounds, unless you have a Unless That's you've a been load authorized of by the church to do this kind of song. Are you saying that you don't care about the Human Rights Act? You're lost? Oh. What are you doing here? I am preaching. You are preaching. I'm going to require you to go away. You can never. Okay, then I will arrest you for a breach of peace. Plain and simple. What? Breach of peace. It's what you're doing at the moment. You're causing problems, you're disturbing people's days, and you're breaching their peace. Okay, so to me, for that to be dealt with, if you won't go away voluntarily, we will have to arrest I you. I will not go away. You need to because I need to tell them the truth. Because Jesus is the only way. The truth. Don't take my Bible away. Don't take my Bible. I gave you the simple option. What are you here for today? Uh, physically, I'm just standing here. Okay. Why, why here of all places? I know you don't, you don't live nearby. But this is an abortion center. Okay. That's what I was doing. Is, is you standing here part of the protest? No. I'm not are you, protesting. Are you, are you praying? I might be praying in my head. You're under arrest, a class suspicion of failing to comply with the public spaces protection order, which is under the uh, Antisocial Behaviour Plan of Policing Act 2014. Now, let's contrast that with how London, under a Muslim mayor, Sadiq Khan, treats immigrants who would like to spread their beliefs all over the streets in this allegedly Christian country. So then the question becomes, deportation aside, if you are morally consistent in this argument, then why don't I see you up in arms about the Christians who are being persecuted in their own country for their religious beliefs? But unfortunately, Constantine, not a Christian, so it wouldn't be his line. Now let's check out the next part where this individual realizes that he is being absolutely schooled. So he goes to pull the only card that he knows how. We will agree on that, and I'll also say this, uh, for those who are watching, especially Perfect. the youth, uh, there's a great meme, a Family Guy meme, where there's a chart of who gets to be labeled a terrorist and who doesn't. Uh, the front part of the chart is when you have light skin, you're not a terrorist. When it gets Why darker do you and darker, always, people you're like you always bring race into it. It's got nothing to do with race people like and me. everything to do with people who kill people. Mm. Yes, people yet, like you, race baiters like you. I have not like heard you. you. Yes. And I have not heard you really express this much outrage against the number one domestic terror threat against all our uh, communities in America and the UK, which is rising white Bro, nationalism. I not am a, a word, dark skinned but you seem to have first a generation immigrant to the UK. I don't play your racial games. Stop using your skin color as a way to shut other people up and let's talk about the issue. 
The issue here is should we tolerate people. foreign terrorists but let's in our country, people or and should we remove down. them? And okay. my opinion is we should remove people who are not conducive to this country. And if someone like me, first generation immigrant, comes here and wants to be a terrorist, it is first generation immigrants like me that are at the front of the queue to get them out. Okay. It's been a fascinating debate. Remove people oh, listen, I think who are you, not you, conducive to this. It's been, it's been a fascinating debate. Okay. I actually think who that, are terrorists? Yes. I actually think, Vajan, to be fair to you, I do think that the white nationalism-related uh, terrorist acts that we see increasingly is never played up as much actually as Islamist terror was, particularly in the heyday of Al Qaeda and ISIS. I think it's a perfectly valid point to make, for what it's worth. I think I've made that point actually before. Piers Morgan. This guy. White nationalist terrorists are never being played up in the media. Are you joking me? Plus, who are the white nationalist terrorists that you're talking about? I would love to know more about what he actually means there. Because to me, and maybe I'm seeing things, it seems as though every time a white person does something egregious, the fawning mainstream media will jump all over the story and start whipping themselves and self-flagellating saying how terrible and racist white people are and how terrible and racist these extremely tolerant western countries are but the fact of the matter here and the reason why this drama occurs is not because western countries are so unbelievably racist it's because they are the most moral and they are the most tolerant countries in the entire world these are the cultures that come from whether you are a believer or not, a Christian tradition that teaches us how to love our neighbor, how to turn the other cheek and not respond in anger, and to not only forgive, but to pray for those who do us wrong. So if you ask me, it's about time we started being proud of that. So guys, you can find me below as usual. And also, if you'd like to subscribe, if you haven't already, you can click right here. If you'd like to watch another video, my interview with Konstantin is going to be one of these two. I'm not sure which one. And another video, then you can click right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.